Welcome back to Adri's Farmhouse Kitchen. Today we are going to do some fermented vegetables. Fermented beetroot and fermented cucumbers. So the ingredients are similar to both of the ferments. So in one ferment we're going to use the cucumbers and in the other one the beetroot. And in both we're going to use some garlic, I'm going to use mixed peppercorn, bay leaves, pink Himalayan salt, water, we're going to use dill, horseradish, horseradish leaves, grapevine and quince. So if you're interested, you are welcome. We are in the kitchen today. The first thing is we're going to wash everything thoroughly. I'm going to peel and chop the beetroot and I'm just going to cut the blossom end for the ends for the cucumbers and maybe do a little bit of an additional cut. And I've got these fermented vessels. I'm using crock pots today. I absolutely love my fermented crock pots. So we're gonna use these two today and I cannot wait to start. After we finish we're gonna have to wait between about seven to ten days before we can try it. So let's do it. Such a beautiful day. My dogs every time they come to my garden and obviously because in, I'm in a garden the goats will run to the fence because I'm giving them lots of treats and the dogs just go nuts, honestly. They just, I don't know, they are literally tiny next to the goat but they still winding the goats up. So that's all that barking you hear most of the time. <laughs> and honestly, I've tried my best to train them to just leave them alone but no. They just, they just think it's, I think it's tremendous fun. Okay, we've got horseradish, some dill. Let's get some grapevines. It's such a nice feeling just to go to the garden and literally pick all the ingredients, what you need for all these preservation days or cooking days. I, I really adore it. Okay, I've just harvested some ingredients for today's project. So I've got horseradish and leaves and roots, grapevine, dill. We have got quince and that's it. Okay, so I'm just going to peel the garlic the beetroot and just tidy up that cucumber. Such a lovely, healthy way to ferment our vegetables. I've already got the fermented chilies going in there. That's gonna be hot, we're gonna make a hot fermented hot sauce with that and I've also got the apple cider vinegar there but we need to strain it so probably we're gonna do that as well today actually and already this morning I've made some few more three three more jars of a damson jam I've picked a few more So, I am going to make this recipe up. Well, I kind of follow the recipe, but I will make quite a bit of adjustment to it. So, we'll see how it goes.
I'm also gonna yeah, set the bay leaf. First of all, I'm going to probably... So I'm using two kilograms of cucumber and two kilograms of beetroot. So they go to two separate vessels. Now I'm thinking about to change into the glass one of beetroot so we can see it. Although it's uh, better if it's dark environment, you know, if, but I've got some plans for the big crock pot, I just remembered. It's gonna be our next project. So what we're gonna do, I washed the vegetables, I washed the cucumbers and the beetroot and I weighed it, so they both weigh two kilograms. And to each kilogram, I'm gonna add four cups of water. That's us. We're gonna start with four cups of water to each kilogram and a tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt. If it's not gonna cover it, then we're gonna make more brine. So for two kilograms, we're gonna use eight cups or about two liter water and two tablespoons of salt and I'm gonna give a good mix first the salt and the water make sure the salt dissolves and put that aside and then to our freshly washed crock pot we are going to add a couple of mixed peppercorn bay leaf garlic we're also gonna add some horseradish, quince, grapevine leaves, horseradish leaves and roots. Um, what else we're gonna add? Dill, dill head, dill weed, seeds, and then we're going to put the vegetables on the top. And then pour the brine over the over the over it, and weigh it down. And that's it. Honestly, fermenting it's I think in my opinion it's the quickest and easiest method out of most of the preservations. Thinking about easy methods, also freeze drying it's pretty easy. And I've got two trays in a freezer, but I foraged for some more mushrooms. So I filled two trays of mushrooms in my medium freeze dryer with four trays. So I've got two of mushrooms, one of the oven roasted marinara uh, leftover, you know, the, we peeled the tomato skin off. So that filled one tray. And I still got one tray left before I can try the freeze dryer, although it's not ideal to mix and match. The best would be if you would have, you know, all kind of all the same sort of food in there, but at the moment that's how it is. So we need one more and I'm thinking of maybe freeze dry some cucumbers because I've got some left over and I've tied it up the tunnel now so there's no more cucumber until next year so we need to make literally the most of it. Tonight we're gonna make, we're gonna have steak, marinated steak and chips so I might do a nice like creamy cucumber salad to go with it. I've made it yesterday as well because we had two lovely steak and uh, tomorrow I've made it with the foraged mushroom like, like creamy mushroom sauce it was divine so good okay the garlic and the cucumbers are now ready I'm just gonna peel that beetroot and we can start packing the crock pot Honestly, this beetroot, this French variety, so 
so yummy and sweet. The, I definitely had one of the best beetroot here. So I'm tempted to go and store some in a cellar and um, we'll see how it goes, how long it's gonna last for us. We still got on previous year some pickled beetroot, so I'm planning to do a few jars. So we've got fresh. Now we're gonna have fermented. And uh, put this fancy knife, but it's, you know, when you cut it, just cut it like sort of that kind of shape. I think it just looks cool. I'll show you. Raw or fermented, so I'm probably gonna do lots of like salad kind of dishes where I can grate it or just cut it in cubes and eat as much as we can fresh because it's so good for us, friends. I should really put gloves on, but. Never mind. I'm not going nowhere fast in the next couple of days and that will come off in a good few wash. So, nearly all the beetroot is now cut. Okay, I am ready. I have decided to use this glass jar so I can see what's going on in there. So what I'm gonna do first thing first, I've got two liter of water here. Put the cucumber aside just for a sec. I need the water. I need two cups. Yeah, it is two cups. Two cups of pink Himalayan salt. And then we're gonna give this a very good mix. Until it nicely combined. In the meanwhile, we're going to fill this jar. So I'm gonna start with some dill weed and stock. All can go in there. Let's put some, we're gonna put the horseradish leaf on a top. Let's put some horseradish, crushed garlic, quince, four bay leaves, let's put, let's put Two tablespoons of mixed peppercorns. That was one, and that's two. Perfect. Let's keep turning this. And next, we're gonna add some beetroot. Add one kilogram of chopped, diced, peeled, diced beetroot in here, just like this. And I'm gonna add again a bit more horseradish, a bit more garlic. Oops. And I'm gonna add some dill seed. I'm just gonna pick it off like that. Dill seed has got the most flavor. Half one spin. And we're going to add some grape leaves. 
put it around it so it looks pretty, just like that. There you go. Okay. And a few more bay leaves and the rest of the beet shoot. This is going to be a full house. Right. Okay. Now we're going to pour them right over. Perfect, friends. That worked out perfect. Now we just need to weigh it down. And I'm going to weigh this down with some horseradish leaves. So I'm going to put the horseradish leaves on the top and make sure that all the beetroot is under that brine. That's it. Perfect. I'm going to put the lid on and just like that, our final beetroot is done. I'm going to put this on a baking tray just in, just in case. And uh, that's it. Right, next we are going to make the cucumber ferment. So we do the same thing really, I'm just going to add a few things, few quince, garlic, horseradish, bay leaf, two teaspoons of peppercorn. and two tablespoons of salt again to two liters of water so we're just going to do basically the same thing okay do a good stir water and the salt and we can start adding the rest of the ingredients so again i leave the grapevines to weigh down the cucumbers in the end, but we can use some, I mean the horseradish leaves, three points can go in now, like this, perfect, with the dill, the dill can go in, that's it, all right, and I'm going to put, in this case, it's still green, the whole dill head. And now, the cucumbers. So I'm just going to make some additional cuts, if it's a large one. Just like a cross like that. And put it on the bottom. Just stand it up nicely next to each other. Already, we already cut the two ends off, so that's done. This vessel is quite large, so I've got no problem with the length. If they are medium size, I just do one cut. Like that. So don't go all the way. So make sure they're still attached together. Okay. Nearly there. A few more left. Small ones can just go in as they are. 
And now we're just going to finish it off with the rest of the horseradish root, garlic, some bay leaf and some more dill. Dill weed and stem and dill head. I really like the flavour so I put plenty in there. I think We've got the lot, friends. Maybe a few more grapevine leaves. Like that to weigh it down. And the brine. These are my <laughs> plum jam. well so that worked out fantastic just weigh it down more with the horseradish leaves and our cucumber ferment is done as well okay put the lid on I'm gonna add some water in the rim here and this is done so our beetroot and our cucumber ferments are ready for some fermentation I'm gonna give them a week and then we're going to check in a week's time if we're happy with the flavor we can then put it in a cool location if not we can still go up to 10 days and then try again so see you back in a week's time this has been so much fun and now as you can see it's about 10 days later so we are getting out of the beetroot straining it to another vessel i'm going to use up the glass pot we're gonna do another project in there and the beetroot, the fermented beetroot, the ready fermented beetroot is now in this tub. It tastes amazing and I'm going to put this in a fridge and we just use it whenever we want it. And the next thing I'm doing in here, making quince liqueur. So our quince first year producing fantastic. So I've just harvested a few. These ones were actually windfalls, so I had to come up some, with some something quick. And I thought, hmm, let's make quince liqueur. And I had some vodka on hand and some dark rum. So I've, that's what I've used. So basically I've used vodka, rum, sugar and the quince. And I'm going to leave that for a while, probably until close to December time. And then we're going to strain it and have a taste test. So for Christmas, we are have our very own quince liqueur. Okay, the fermented beetroot is now ready. I have moved this to this plastic tub because I'm seriously running out of glass jars. And this now goes to the fridge. And the new thing in a glass jar it's the quince liqueur so i've been using in there some polish vodka 40 percent also some caribbean dark room caribbean pearl i used three cups of the vodka and about a half a cup to a cup of the rum and I filled it up with about a kilogram of uh, quince. I cored it, half peeled it, so half of it peeled, half of it not peeled, cut it in like smaller, like an inch cubes. And I've also put two cups of sugar. So this is now going to sit in this jar. I'm going to stir it daily. And for Christmas, we're going to have quince liqueur. 
Welcome back, friends. I actually I want to show you something. I would like to tell you an update on my fermented beetroot and gherkins. So the beetroot is well both done. It's been about ten days now, and I transferred from the crock pot. Where is it? The crock pot. Oh, you know the glass one. There is a Queen's liqueur now for Christmas. And I put that in this plastic uh, little container, all the beach shoot with a brine, and this is now in a fridge. And the gherkins, the fermented gherkins is ready now. Let's just try one. So remember we've put horseradish leaves, grape, vine leaves on top, now let's just have one out and have a taste test, but from the smell, I, I know this is now done. Actually, I'm going to remove these leaves. We don't need these leaves, all of them. Smells lovely and sour. Let's have a taste test. Mmm. Wow, fantastic. This is amazing. Still crunchy. Amazing. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I think I'm just gonna leave this in this crock pot and put this as it is to the fridge. Both the beetroot and the fermented cucumbers. And we're just gonna eat it every whenever we feel like it. My other job for today, all these beans now dry. So I'm shelling beans today as well. All these different colors, lovely, looking amazing. And also, I wanna show you something. Harvesting some more beans here. Um, they're not all totally dry, and it was a little bit damp. And it's still a bit damp because it's raining a lot again but I've just the airflow is quite good in here and we'll see hopefully they will dry out nicely for us here and then we're just gonna shell them when it's ready it has been a fantastic bean year again I am having so many beans now I think I prefer the beans leave it and have it as a dried bean, then eat it fresh as green beans. So these ones are bone dry, ready for shelling and put it for storage for the winter month or whenever we want it. I still got some from last year and uh, they are just amazing protein whenever we just want a quick meal in a pressure canner or if we would like soup. I do use a lot in soups. It's, it's, it's our culture. We do eat a lot, lots of bean soup kind of meals. And these dried shelling beans are absolutely fantastic for all these purposes. So I am nearly done actually. And just like that, I have done another job. So I've just shelled all these dried beans and that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today and being here in a journey for making the fermented beetroot and gherkins and see you very soon. Bye friends!